Russia's military on Wednesday announced it's withdrawing from the city of Kherson in Ukraine. Kherson links to the Russian-occupied Crimean Peninsula. It's also the only regional capital Russia has been able to capture. This withdrawal is possibly the most significant and humiliating setback Russian forces have seen in this eight-month-long invasion. However, Ukrainian forces are cautious, warning the move could be a ploy to lure the Ukrainian army into more fighting. For more, I'm joined by George Beebe. He is the director of Grand Strategy at the Quincy Institute, and he specializes in Russian affairs. He also authored The Russia Trap, How Our Shadow War with Russia Could Spiral into Nuclear Catastrophe. George, thank you for being here. First, why is Kherson so important geographically? Well, for the Ukrainians, uh, Kherson is the gateway to a possible effort to retake Crimea. Um, and for the Russians, uh, Kherson is the possible gateway to an effort to take the southern Ukrainian coast, the key port cities of Mykolaiv and Odessa. So if Russia loses Kherson, as it appears that they now have, th that really precludes any opportunity the Russians might have to try to advance along the southern Ukrainian coast. And it exposes uh, Crimea as potentially vulnerable to uh, a Ukrainian offensive. Moscow's top military commander said it was impossible to supply the city and defending it would be futile. What does that say about Russian capability along the front lines? Well, I think militarily, uh, Kherson was uh, the only city that the, the Russians had that was on the western edge of the Dnieper River. And because of its geographic location on the other side of that river, I think the Russians rightly judged that uh, resupplying and defending it was quite a, a challenge. Uh, the Ukrainians had destroyed the bridges that connected the city to Russian forces on the eastern edge. So it was a, a genuinely difficult military challenge to defend it. But they seem to be running into genuinely difficult military challenges everywhere they send their military. Uh, so if they're backing out of this, I guess what I would love is your general assessment of their capacity and capability now that we've seen eight months of, of Russian military behavior. Does this render a verdict or, or, or give you a further sense of what their capacity is? Well, I think what this tells us is that Russia's ability to go on the offensive and capture large amounts of Ukrainian territory is quite limited. Uh, it doesn't tell you a lot at this point about how well they can play defense uh, for what they already hold uh, in Ukraine. The Russians are really digging in right now. They're preparing uh, defensive fortifications to prevent the Ukrainians from going much farther. They've thrown a lot more troops at the, the lines. Um, they've built a lot of fortifications. So uh, I don't think that this means they're in imminent danger of losing this war altogether. But it does mean that they've gonna, they're, they're ratcheting back their ambitions quite significantly in Ukraine. So if this is truly the, as I saw one description, the greatest battlefield loss for Russia since the collapse of the Soviet Union, uh, and I don't know if you agree with that characterization, but one of the things we've been talking about for months is that if Putin is backed into a corner, that he could lash out in any myriad of, of frightening ways. This seems to be backing him further into a corner, um, or I mean, and if so, where do you think we are in terms of that conversation? Or was this idea of him lashing out kind of a part of the mythology that he surrounds himself with as a way to kind of bully his opponents? Well, I think Putin is under a great deal of pressure right now. The loss of Kherson, uh, coupled to several of the other recent losses that Russian forces have suffered in Ukraine, has provoked an awful lot of criticism of Putin uh, from his political right, from a part of the political spectrum that he would ordinarily enjoy a lot of support from. They're questioning his competence, his leadership, his decisions and all of this. Um, so uh, he's not yet backed all the way into a corner, but I think he can certainly feel the walls behind him. Um, and if, uh, if Russia suffers uh, real assaults on Crimea, then I think we're, we're really in the, uh, a phase where he could start to lash out quite dangerously. And just very quickly, do you have a sense of what that in fact means? to lash out dangerously? 
Well, I don't know that you can uh, predict exactly what that might look like. There are an awful lot of things that the Russians could do to escalate this war. The big concern, of course, is the use of nuclear weapons. I don't think the Russians would resort to that early on if they really felt their backs were against the wall. They could do other things that uh, I think would, would really escalate this first. But sure, ultimately, if Putin faced a choice between losing Crimea and using nuclear weapons, I, I think there's a decent chance that uh, he might, in fact, contemplate that. Mm. Frightening notion. George Beebe, thank you so much for being with us. You're welcome.